This Sunday, we hear one of the most terrifying stories in all of the Bible, what's called the binding of Isaac, where God tells his servant Abraham to offer his own beloved son Isaac as a kind of human sacrifice. Uh, the story proceeds grimly with Abraham taking Isaac up the mountain then binding him up uh, and then preparing to sacrifice him only to hear an angel tell him to stop long enough that he sees a ram instead caught in the bushes so that Abraham offers the ram instead of his son in sacrifice and God rewards him with the promise of blessing and victory over all of his enemies and over the world. That story has been interpreted in many ways over the past 3,000 years. And I'd like to call your attention to one interpretation by a rabbi, Ephraim of Ban, from about 800 years ago. Ephraim wrote at a time that was terrible for the Jewish people when Catholics, ironically, were persecuting them bitterly, sometimes even massacring whole villages or neighborhoods of Jewish people simply because they were Jewish. In the midst of all this death, when, when some parents lost their children, their own beloved children, simply because they were Jewish, because they did not convert to Christianity, uh, the rabbi says that this uh, story of the binding of Isaac is an abbreviation. That in fact, what happened historically, from Rabbi Ephraim's perspective, is that Abraham actually went and completed the sacrifice, killed his own beloved son Isaac, and then God raised him from the dead until Abraham says poignantly to God then, shall I kill him again? And God of course then comes in and says, as he does in the story, no, no, now I'm rewarding you for, willing, for being willing to make that sacrifice. From Rabbi Ephraim's perspective, this is a story about how much the Jewish people have sacrificed in order to be faithful to God, even sometimes losing their own children. And for Christians, it can be a similar story writ large, that this is the story of the cross, the God who gave his own son on the cross for our salvation. And we too, we make these little sacrifices of prayer and fasting and almsgiving and Lent, but our bigger story is the story of the cross that we share with Jesus Christ, giving up some of the good things of this world sometimes even lost love and dignity and joy for the sake of being with Jesus. And it might seem as if God is miserable, that God only wants us to suffer, as Abraham might have thought as he was preparing to sacrifice his own son. But the message of Jesus Christ is no, no. God does not intend your suffering and death alone. He intends your salvation and he intends for you life even eternal life. So just as Isaac's life was either spared or restored, depending upon which interpretation you prefer, so in Christ, all of God's people, not only the Jewish people, but all of God's people find new life and new joy, the hope of eternal life. So whatever your suffering in this season or beyond it, whatever grief you may endure, whatever defeats you may have suffered, whatever failures you may think you have incurred, whether it's your fault or others, remember God's answer is that your life is not a tragedy. In Christ, you will find joy and new life in his resurrection. Yes, along the way, some suffering and even some grief and death, but resurrection and new life forever.